Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I've got a full review for you on a brand new tier 8 premium medium tank. Yeah, that's not very surprising. There seem to be quite a few of them going into the game recently, right? But what is surprising about this vehicle is that it is featuring a style and the crew, or shall I say the characters, from the very popular current Amazon series, the Boys. Now, I thoroughly love The Boys. I loved the season one. I've watched the first, I think, three or four episodes of season two. It's definitely my thing, so I might be a bit biased here. But to have The Boys and also to have the possibility of the seven, as I'm going to show you on in a second, on the side of your vehicle, it's pretty cool if you do like the program. However, if you have no idea what the program is and you have absolutely no interest in it, then maybe all you do is care about whether this is going to be a good premium tank. And that's what I am here today to let you know, whether I think the T-42, this Tier 8 premium American medium tank, is worth the price point, and whether it's replacing all of the other premium medium tanks in the game as the new best pick. So let's see how the statistics of this vehicle stack up compared to its competition. So first things first, in a micro patch yesterday, Wargaming decided to buff the statistics of the T-42, making Tanks GG slightly outdated. So the accuracy was actually buffed from 0.36 up to 0.32, and the view range of the vehicle was actually buffed from 380 to up to 400. So take that into account when I am comparing the statistics of these vehicles. And while I definitely do make some mistakes, if you think I'm going crazy going, no, it says 380 meters view range QB, that's because it was micro patch yesterday. All right, so T42, I'm going to compare it to the TL1 LPC, aka the vehicle that went into the game with the Offspring band, and also the CS52 lease, the latest premium medium tank, which is Polish and not American. All right, so immediately we see that the T42 has not the best damage per minute, 1,846. Definitely not great compared to the TL1 LPC, but especially not good compared to the CS52 lease. So if you expect this thing to be able to rip apart its opponents quickly, yeah, that's not going to be the case. The penetration is also really disappointing, 190 on its standard rounds. That's kind of good for maybe World of Tanks in 2015. Definitely not good for World of Tanks in 2020 compared to the competition. However, if you choose to fire gold rounds with this vehicle, then you actually have 268 millimeters of penetration. So a lot like the Pershing or the Super Pershing, the penetration of this vehicle will massively increase if you decide to fire gold. But isn't one of the main reasons why you play a premium medium tank to fire standard rounds and make large amounts of credits? Well, it's up to you for whatever reason you choose to play the tank. The alpha damage of this vehicle is 280 always baffles me. Back in the day, the standard alpha damage for a medium tank was about 230, if not 240. Seems to be stepping up, 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 and up. And 280 it feels like it's the new standard. And there's even 320 with the CS52 lease, 360, and also even, of course, 390 on a T34-3. But the difference is those tanks have got terrible gun handling. Whether this tank's going to have terrible gun handling remains to be seen. Well, actually, why don't I just talk about it right now, considering it's right down there on the list. So the aim time of this vehicle, two seconds. That's wonderful, but the dispersion value of 0.2, ooh, that's awful. It definitely means you need to use vertical stabilizers on this tank, otherwise you are going to be blooming out of proportion. The accuracy buff to 0.32 doesn't really make sense to me, considering what the reload is of the vehicle um, and the damage per minute of the vehicle is and the gun caliber, right? It has a 90 millimeter, but 280 alpha damage. To be that much more accurate than the TL1 LPC and the CS52, Oh, I think Wargaming were just looking for ways to make this vehicle a little bit more attractive so it probably sells better today. The gun depression on this tank is a magnificent 10 degrees which allows you to work a ridgeline like a boss. But we're going to have to see whether it's got weak points as to whether that is going to be any good. Because there's one thing about having gun depression, there's another thing about having turret armor. So the top speed limit of this tank actually surprised me. I thought it was going to be quite slow, 51.5. So slightly faster than the other two vehicles, although practically the same. The reverse speed at 20. And when we take a look at the weight of the tank, it actually weighs uh, 16 tons. Well, that's actually not correct at all. I'm not sure what this is in. Maybe it's in pounds, but that's that's not right. The weight of this vehicle is actually just shy of 34 tons when the tank is not equipped. So definitely don't want to be ramming one of these things. And if you do get to ram light tanks in this vehicle, it's decent. So the power to weight of this tank is actually not too good. While it has a 500 horsepower engine, that's not great for a tier 8 medium tank. So the power to weight is less than 15. That means this thing's going to be quite slow. Maybe you even want to use a turbo on this vehicle, but what you would sacrifice to use a turbo when you absolutely, utterly, really have to use vertical stabilizers on this tank is going to be up to you. The ground resistances on this vehicle as well, a little bit worse than the TL1 
uh, TL1LPC. And so this is going to be very sluggish compared to one of the more recent tier 8 premium American medium tanks in the game. All right, so now let's move on to armor. And wow, this is where this thing actually looks like it's pretty good. It is an armored vehicle. That would make sense as to why it's quite heavy and it has a poor power to weight ratio so let's just take a look just how good the armor is on this tank 101 millimeters at the front of the hull 76 at the side which means that you can kind of over angle the side armor of this vehicle and can't be overmatched by anything and the front of the turret 215 and 63 on the side of the turret woof this thing looks meaty however let's use tanks gg to take a look to see if this is really all over the tank ah so we find out that that plate is only on the upper hull of this vehicle this means that you really don't want to be shooting the upper hull of this vehicle especially if it's using its gun depression if it's using its gun depression woof, 220 millimeters of effective armor that is very good indeed for a tier 8 medium tank. Its lower plate, however, will be completely tragic. And when it angles like this, do you notice how the whole of the front of the hull becomes a real big weak point? That's going to be a, a pain to try and side scrape in a tank like this. That means that this thing really wants to go hull down. When I take a look at the turret of this vehicle, it just screams pattern to me. This looks like a Patton's turret, an M46 Patton's turret. And wow, look at this. 220 millimeters of effective armor pretty much all over the turret with 260. What happens if we use the gun depression of this tank? If we use the gun depression of this tank, now we're packing like 250, 300 millimeters of penetration. Whoa, this is a very, a very heavily armored medium tank. I would akin it to more of a, a, a heavy tank, really. You know the pattern, you know the M46 pattern, and this thing looks like it is very comparable to that. Looks like that's what the uh, T42 is. It does have a bit of a weak point on top, although being able to hit that would be a little bit tricky. This thing, for me, looks as if as long as you hide the hull armor and you only expose the turret to equal but preferably lower tiered opponents and you make sure you keep your turret pointing towards them, that is what it's designed to do. And if you do that, you are going to be able to chew tanks up. That's one of the great things about this vehicle compared to something like the Lansen, for example. You don't usually have tanks with 10 degrees of gun depression that also have very good turret armor. So the T-42, kind of making up for the speed of the vehicle there. So the view range, as I mentioned, has been buffed up to 400. And funnily enough, this vehicle actually has better camera rating than the TL-1 LPC, I guess because of its slightly lower profile, but it's definitely not nearly as good as the CS-52. So all in all, those are the statistics of the T-42. Now I want to go into the garage and show you all of the different crews that you will be able to get with this vehicle. And that's right, the standard crew for this tank is actually a brothers in arms crew so you're going to be getting butcher everyone knows him from uh from the boys you get huey there you also get frenchy and you're getting mother's milk whose real name of course is marvin so that's one of the options but funnily enough this tank actually comes with two crews and that's because you don't want to play it with the boys but instead you want to play it with the seven then you can equip them inside this vehicle so you can have homelander yeah what what a character he is you can have black noir you can have a train and you can even have the deep oh my lord talk about anti-heroes if you haven't seen this program i do thoroughly recommend it um i'm not gonna spoil anything but these two especially they're pretty out there let's just say it that way especially in season two and no i'd just like to clarify today my hair is not a homelander cosplay that's quite worrying considering what an evil son of a gun he is hmm, maybe it's time for a change so inside the standard package for this vehicle it comes with actually three different skins one is a 3d skin that you see on the vehicle now called the big ride if i remove it you can also, if you absolutely hate all of this, the boys junk and all you want is the vehicle and you want to paint it in whatever way you can, then you can remove the style and the T-42 will look like this. So if you want to play everything historical and you want to make World of Tanks look like good old World of Tanks like it used to, you can still do that. And thankfully, it looks like Wargaming's pricing, at least from what I've been able to see of it, doesn't look like it's extortionate to be able to get all of this extra stuff on the vehicle as well. So, yes, the big ride. This is the 3D style that you'll have on the tank. And if you are a fan of the series, you'll be able to pick up yeah, lots of little extra things on the tank. If, however, you want to have, uh, well, in addition to this, you actually get two styles which you can use on all vehicles. So why don't I go and put them on the mouse? You also get the boys outfit. And you also get another special style for the seven outfit as well. So here you go. Here is the boy style. And let's be honest, everything looks good on the mouse, right? So we've got Butcher on the front. It does look a little bit weird that some of the, the characters are just flat up 
a flat out, flat out upside down. But if you're going to look at it from at least the left side of the vehicle, yeah, I think it's a pretty fetching skin, at least for a 2D style that you could put on. Um, if this isn't your thing, however, you don't like the boys and you feel a bit like an evil maniac instead, then you can, of course, put the 7 on the tank. And I am looking forward to seeing Homelander's cheesy grin with the deep Queen Maeve, Black Noir as well. A train on the back of the vehicle and there he is. There's our boy, probably one of the most evil characters that I've ever seen in a TV series or even in a movie. It is, of course, Homelander. So those are the three different styles that come in the standard package. Whether you're going to be able to buy them separately remains to be seen. But as of yet, the only way to be able to get them is to buy the tank. All right, so the T-42, how would I equip this vehicle? So as I have an experienced crew from my M48 A5 pattern, which is one of my most played tanks, I'm going to be personally be using my bounty vents, my bounty vertical stabilizers, and my bounty gun rammer in this vehicle. However, if you absolutely, utterly want to speed the vehicle up, then I guess you could use yourself a turbocharger inside the mobility of this tank. But then what are you going to do? Drop the vents? Drop the vert stabs? This vehicle doesn't have the best gun handling, so you're probably going to have pretty horrific dispersion if you choose to drop the vertical stabilizers on this tank. For a free-to-play player out there, I would thoroughly recommend using coated optics instead of the vents on this vehicle with vertical stabilizers and a gun rammer if you don't have any bond equipment, you don't have a good crew and you're not willing to use premium consumables. One thing that I just noticed that is slightly annoying about this vehicle is the commander is actually the radio operator. So if you want to use your M48 crew inside the T-42, that means that you're going to probably have situational awareness wasted on your loader. And this is kind of annoying because the only other American medium tanks where the commander is also the radio operator is the T-69. Not really sure if people have the best crews inside that tank. And also the TL-1 LPC. So I'm actually going to be taking my Dexter Holland commander and putting them inside my T-42. But I expect for all of the role players out there who want to be either using Butcher or alternatively using Homelander as the commander inside this tank. It won't take you too long as they actually come with a zero skill perk to be able to get them up to speed. But you know what? I think that's quite enough talking and considering that this tank was just released with no NDA. Today I'm going to be doing a live review on this vehicle. So I'm not going to be able to cherry pick my games. Let's take a look to see how we're going to be able to do in the, in the T-42 here. So what am I going to try and do with this American medium tank? Well, obviously, I've talked about how it's got a good turret. It doesn't have the best hull. I want to try and get on a ridge line. I want to try and use that 10 degrees of gun depression. I want to try and use the accuracy that the vehicle has. I don't mind engaging from a ridge line at decent distances in this tank. But also, I won't really mind too much if I get to fight my opponents in close quarters combat as well. On a, as long as I'm basically on a ridge line, I, I think it's pretty obvious as to what you should try and do with this vehicle. All right, so here we go. We're playing out on Erlenberg. There's no artillery here, so sitting on a ridge would be pretty nice. Um, I'm pretty slow, so I feel like I'm going to have to stay on the side which I've spawned. And I think that winning the east will be advantageous for me. Okay, cool. So let's jump in technical issues at the start of the battle. Let's hope that I'm not going to have any technical issues as we enter it. Hopefully it's going to be easy sailing for the T-42. All right, so immediately first impressions. Yeah, it's definitely not the fastest tank that I've ever played in my life. This is not quick twitch. This is not quick. YouTube even. Goodness gracious, when I play live, I always think that I'm live streaming. This is not live. It is live, but it's not live. It's live but I don't have the grace of being able to cherry pick my games. Oh my lord, how am I going to handle the pressure? I don't know. Well, the way that I'm going to handle the pressure is by hopefully getting up on this ridge. Goodness gracious, that's some really good dispersion and really good accuracy on this tank. And gun handling's pretty okay too. That's what vertical stabilizers will do in this tank. Now, I have 460 meters view range, which will mean that I'll be able to spot anybody that I want at decent distances. I'm interested that I've got a load of heavy tanks above me. Well, actually, only a 5100, which is kind of more of a pseudo medium heavy. I'm going to try and get some cross shots here. I'm really worried about getting spot by all the tank destroyers, considering how bad my um, my hull is. But, oof, that's a big hit. Oh, I got spotted. Oh, God, look at those TDs. No, goodness gracious. How many scorpions were there? I got shot by two, killed one. 
Okay, well, yeah, so what did we find out about this tank there? It doesn't really take shots in the side. Oh, God, look at that. The big ride has become the, the bide, apparently. Just bide. The bide. All right, I'll, I'll go with it. So that didn't work out at all. Um, I, I didn't expect to get spotted so easily there as I pulled back around the corner, but the problem was is that there's just all manner of scorpions doing cheeky stuff. All right, so accuracy there. Surprising that it didn't manage to go, and I would have loved to have hit that fellow. would have been absolutely lovely. I think he's going to come into that bush. He's, he's, he's like waiting to not get spotted. Yeah, he doesn't have a, a good inkling. Plus, I have a very good crew here. My crew had designated target. And because my crew has designated target, that means that they will actually keep my opponents lit up for two extra seconds. So that Scorpion G didn't account for that. So we managed to, to shoot them down. Oh, dear. So yeah, how am I going to play this with only 368 hit points now? This is pretty darn awkward. Um, Erlenberg, definitely one of my least favorite maps, I think, in the game. It's an incredibly campy map, and it annoys me greatly. Notice how the shell seems to be coming from quite high up on this tank. I just noticed that the gun is actually quite low on the turret. That means that this tank's got quite a forehead. Like me, I have quite a forehead as well. And so that means that if you aren't using the gun depression... What's wow, really weird. Do you see where the gun is on the tank? It's really quite low. That's absolutely bizarre. It's a bit more than more like a light tank. So definitely watch out for that. Watch out on this vehicle. If you do expose the top of your tank, then it's going to be an absolute disaster. Oh, hello. What's up, Mr. Centurion? You're getting shot in the side? Oh, dear. The enemy team seems to have managed to go through the center of this map. Hmm. Not sure how I'm going to make a comeback into this game, Twitch, but we're, we're not going to give up. Oh, that's a, a pretty good start. Unfortunately, as he goes around there, he spots my T28 prototype, who gets nailed from the side, and that's not very good. All right, so, yeah. What am I going to do here? Not much. I think we're just going to have to, to die, really. Should we see what else we can get out of this game after we get double-tapped in the hull? Maybe a little bit too cheeky of me. Erlenberg, aka the campy map. You want your heavy tanks to pretty much just do their thing. And unfortunately for me, it didn't quite work out. What's this Scorpion G doing? He's going to come and shoot me, but I'm going to shoot his tracks and make him miss. Well, he's freaking out. Is his turret ring jammed? That was pretty good. I'll take that. All right, if I can just do that another 10 times, we will win this battle. If I just manage to hard outplay 10 more opponents... <laughs> then maybe I'm going to win. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Not with this amount of hit points. It is probably not going to happen, Tavarish. But it's okay. Wait, I'm not playing a Soviet tank. That's what I needed to do. I needed to be playing a Soviet medium tank. If I was playing a Soviet, uh, Soviet medium tank, maybe I could have done it. So I'm getting proxy spotted. This little alcove here is actually very strong. You can get shots as they manage to come across on the west. But it does feel like this is a bit of a losing position. What do you mean, QB? It's a losing position. Well, what I mean is that this position doesn't really progress the situation. And if I'm not progressing the situation, it's going to be incredibly awkward. How are you meant to win games if you don't progress and manage to outflank your opponents? You're not going to win by doing this, are you? Really? Sitting in a corner? At low tiers, sometimes it works. At low tiers, sometimes you can literally just sit in the corner and hope that the enemy suck really badly. But in this case... I'm just not sure that's going to be the example, old boy. Ooh. Wow, I just repaired my gun, so I guess we will. Good old offspring crew giving me some jibber-jabber in this battle. Hopefully I can hit the CS-53. This, this Prigetta, they are so incredibly annoying. Do you think this thing looks like... It looks a bit like a chaffy, doesn't it? It's a real weird tank. It's like a little toy tank. Didn't really read the description of this vehicle and find out if it was actually any kind of historical tank. To be honest, I play this game not really for the historical point of view. I mean, I like the history. What was there to like about war? I mean, it's a, a terribly great part of history. Terribly great. I think that tanks inside it, absolutely... Whoa! No! I think tanks are mechanical feats of incredible engineering and um, hopefully they were there to be able to oh yes change the course of history thankfully for the better strong Soviet and strong American tanks oh look there's a T-42 on the enemy team as well oh 
The accuracy on this tank is actually really good. Did you see that? 0.32 accuracy. I think I'm finding a reason to want to play this tank a little bit. I got a funny feeling that the scorpion is on his way over towards me. Can you believe that scorpion's just been sitting there the entire game? Hmm. What? How am I still spotted? I know they're taking my cap circle, but I don't think there's much that I can do about it with the scorpion who's sitting somewhere over there. Oh, there he is. Why would he be there in that corner? It's a real weird position for the scorpion to be in, and you're right, the show is over. All right, 1,000 damage, 1,700 assistance here. Definitely not the best game that I ever wanted to have for my T42. However, what did we see about this vehicle? We saw that its hull is shocking. We saw that its turret armor is actually really good. The fact that we were able to block two 7032 shells, which is fantastic. We saw that the tank's accurate as well, that 0 0.32 accuracy. I was really surprised that I hit the lower plate of that turtle and hit him hard as well. We hit that turtle hard, 272 damage, and then we followed it up with a kill by going through the lower plate blind. Definitely did feel very nice to have the accuracy at decent distances. Destroy them all, it says on the side of the vehicle. Well, I didn't really destroy them all, but I tried. I kind of just went home. Really? Um, I like the alpha damage as well for being able to out-trade your opponents. Didn't really do too much good trades in this battle. Hopefully the next one will go a little bit better. All right, so credit making potential. What do we got here? Well, if we take away the 50,000 credits, even for that loss, we made 40,000 credits profit. Not too shabby, although I did use some premium consumables in the battle, so we also have to take that into account. So yeah, definitely not my finest game, even though I finish top on experience. Um, with 3,000 combined. It's not a bad start for this tank. Definitely not the one that I wanted. But hopefully you're all enjoying this, this live review here. So you see the games that are pretty awful as well as the games that are, that are good as well um i obviously i cherry pick my best games for youtube i'm not gonna hide it although i try to not present the vehicles in a cherry picked form i will like like i did for my centurion uh, centurion action 10 a review which i think was like a week ago now right i even though i had two incredibly good games in the vehicle did I try to present it like, oh, it's the best medium tank ever? No, not really. That's usually when I have like a good game in the tank and the vehicle showing up in the meta and all of the win ratio. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Let's focus on the T42. What shall I do here? Well, I actually really like the southern flank. However, I think considering that I have such good gun depression and such good turret armor, I'm actually going to go to the north here. I think that the south would be really good for me, but I feel a little bit too slow to be able to get there. So instead of going towards the south, I'm actually going to venture towards the north. I'm going to aim my turret towards the side here to see if we can get the early shot in. Um, hopefully I can get one of these heavy tanks out in the open. That would be absolutely delicious. Don't want to get shot in the side, but they haven't quite made it in yet. There's an ELC even there. I'm going to shoot him. And where's this ELC going? Well, I'm not the fastest of tanks, but I'm definitely not the slowest vehicle. That was close. No cigar though. What's this SU trying to do? Should I swing across? Who should I go for right now? It's a tricky one. Oh, what a shot. 300 damage. You want another one? I can't. Alright, let's go and hunt this SU. Do I think any other TDs will be out there? Oh, goodness gracious. That's a scary tank to have there. I like this tank for tracking, Twitch. YouTube! I'm on YouTube! I'm not on Twitch! Just because I'm live doesn't mean that I'm not on YouTube, you terrible, absolute muppet of a content creator. Get it together, Quacky Baby. Talk about getting it together. That, that T20 just absolutely smashed my fuel tanks. Okay, cool. Um, let's make our way through to the side. IS-6 chilling in the center. I should be able to obliterate this T20. I've got higher alpha damage. I've got a better rate of fire. Or the same rate of fire for higher alpha. And I got better turret arm. I think he'll be running away from me. He is. He is. He is. Okay, T20. You like to mess with me. I like to mess with you as well. How about this? You mess with me, I'll mess with you. You want some more? I'll give it to you. Especially my arty will. Oh, oh, what's that Tiger P doing? That's the Tiger P that I hit earlier. Let's get behind the ridge line. See if I can finish off this T20. Because I got the rate of fire advantage. 
very, 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 very nice. Very nice. I am liking this tank on a ridgeline. I'm going to ask this comet. Look at this. We're trying to create some little friendly teamwork with the comet. Yeah, he knows. Look, this comet knows. He knows what's up. He's going. Oh my gosh, this comet is going. I'm going with him then. I mean, how can I not? Look at this comet. Oh my lord. I'll track him. Come on, Comet. You can get out of the way. What's the scorpion doing? He's shooting one more time, Comet. I'll finish him off. Okay. Oof. 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 Damage taken. Oh, huge amounts of damage. What an IS-6 Black Edition. Just put a high explosive round in through the side of my tank. Who fires HE with an IS-6? Oh, YouTube, 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 YouTube. Oh, YouTube, 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 YouTube. Just as I thought I was going to have a very good game here for this vehicle, I just lost the 582 hit points that I needed. I, I've, I've never seen a 582 roll from a, a gunfire. What is that? Is that like a max roll? So let's think about it. So 390 is the alpha damage of the IS-6 if it fires AP. 390. If it fires HE, I mean, it can't be higher than 480, right? So he rolled. That's pretty much a max roll with HE. That's absolutely filthy. IS-6 Black Edition. How dare you? Don't you know? There was no NDA with this content, which meant that I had to try and rush it. I'm even doing live games, but sometimes YouTube actually likes the live games as well, right? You're not, you're part of the script. That's right, at least I'm tracking him here and locking him down and getting him killed. It's very good. I don't want to get hit by the scorpion right now. Thank goodness the artillery didn't pick me. Why would the artillery pick a tank called the Big Ride, huh? Huh? Artillery won't pick the Big Ride of a tank. What's up, Tiger P? How you doing? You having a good game? Looks like it. Oh, if I do this, the artillery will definitely get me, but not if I kill him first. That aim time, that accuracy, I am liking that Twitch. YouTube! I'm on YouTube! Oh my god, it's, this is weird. You do something for eight years, and you just, like, lose your brain power a little bit. Alright, not too shabby. We managed to pick up a couple of kills here, get 3,000 damage in five minutes. This one's a pretty good round. Shall I see if I can go after the scorpion as well? I'm indicating with my gun. It's clear we are indicating with our gun. Oh no. Oh! <laughs> what is this? It's a destruction derby of stupidity. Luckily, he's the one who actually takes the shot, which means I get the kill. Enemy vehicle destroyed. All right, well, 3,300 damage and 1,058 spotting slash tracking. Pretty okay. 582 IS-6 Black Edition. That is absolutely filthy. It's disgusting amounts of damage. In fact, I'm going to have to take a look. Oh, better, closer, warmer. That was a much better game for this vehicle. We managed to get a high caliber. 1,209 base experience gives us a first class medal. I'm going to be boosting that to try and get my crew up to scratch. And we made 142,000 credits profit, although we have to take the 50k away from completing some kind of event. So it's like a 92k profit. And just to put that into perspective, how hard did that guy hit me? Okay, so actually the average damage of the HE rounds is 530. That's massive. I didn't expect the HE to be that high. So he even high rolled it plus 10% there as well. That was absolutely filthy, mate. So that was a quite a quick game. I think we've got time for one more. So let's get back into the T-42. Maybe we'll meet some tier 10 tanks and I can truly put this tank through its paces. But what did we see from that last game? We saw that the vehicle has a pretty good turret, was able to go hold down against the T-20 on the enemy team and just completely overpower them. Um, it's a lot like a T20 just with turret armor within that regard. We saw that the vehicle's accuracy makes it very nice for shooting at long distances. It's kind of like a sniping medium tank. Hull armor though, absolutely tragic. Getting penned by an HE round in the side, that is not very good at all. And even the side of the turret, definitely not too brilliant. You're not going to have any wonder moments with that. All right, now remember, the problem with this tank, a lot like a Super Pershing, is the power-to-weight ratio. 
So that makes it bad for going upslope, and it will struggle to be able to accelerate quickly once it's lost all its momentum. However, what do we know on, on Glacier? We know that there's a lovely slope here, so now my 51 km an hour top speed limit is actually going to allow me to get into position very quickly as well. And look, even though I've got a worse power to weight ratio than the CS52 lease, I'm actually going to be able to get into position very quickly indeed. Now what I'm going to do is try to get my tank in a position where I can shoot all of these heavies and these mediums that are caught out in the open. So there's a T-32 on my side. I got spotted. I want to drop back. Let's see if this renegade's going to go. He's thinking about it, but he doesn't actually want to commit, which is actually probably the, the right thing to do, considering he should know that if he commits around that corner that I'm going to shoot him. Thinking about getting the Udes, I'm using my map to see this rock that the enemy team pretty much have to be able to hide. I don't know. I guess it's fairer now that there is that big rock there to stop. Ooh, hello. There is, it's fairer now that there is that rock there to protect the enemy team. Man, that rate of fire does not feel very good. I like that accuracy. Even though the shell deviated quite far from where I was aiming, it still kind of went on target. Um, decent enough. Decent enough. The accuracy on this vehicle definitely feels like one of the best features. And so if you're the kind of player who who is a, a bit of a sniper and you've always wanted to have an American tank that can snipe, that's definitely good. One thing that I just noticed about this tank is, oh my lord, the shell velocity difference. You go up to 1,400 meters a second shell velocity. When you go for the premium rounds, you're literally getting 50% extra shell velocity, ladies and gents. That's actually wild. That means that you don't really have to give any lead to be able to engage your opponents with the premium rounds on this tank. That is very powerful. It's really interesting to me that Wargaming seems to just finding new ways to make gold rounds better without just necessarily giving them outrageous pen. But on this tank, they've kind of just done both anyway. So I need to hit the side bit of the Oho, or maybe I could even just shoot his turret. But when I see this IS-3A just going and trundling along, I mean, why wouldn't I, right? The Oho seems to want to derp me. I'm going to go up and do put a shell into him, and I can fall back before his shell actually reaches my tank because he's got terrible shell velocity and I don't. Okay, this is alarming now. So there's an HWK30 who's up here. So I'm going to warn my team that there's an HWK30. Now I have to fall back to this position. We've actually managed to do 1,700 damage purely from the, the mid-ridge of this map. I'm very happy about that. I've got to be careful though. They have got some scary tanks against me. But whoa, wow, this thing. This thing with some gold rounds. Twitch, I... YouTube! Goodness gracious, that's going to become a meme in itself. Ah, how did I miss that one? I missed the easiest shot of the of the game. So I think this thing with its gold rounds does feel absolutely wild. Oh. Well, it wasn't a bigger hit than Pretty Fly, mate. That was a terrible one. Oh, what's happening with the accuracy of the vehicle now? Oh, and they just don't stop penning my turret. Oh, YouTube, 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 YouTube. Oh, what's this? I'm dead. Oh. Well, okay. I really didn't expect that, but that's actually good aggressive play. I mean, you've got to respect that. Ah, it's because it's his platoon mate. I realized I was wrecking his platoon mate. And so the Oho was probably there like, oh no, he's killing me. Please help me, my friend. Oh, look, they're all coming for me now. Look at them. Now the Oho's joined the, the battle as well. Oh, I wish I hadn't lost all my hit points there, though. That would have been so good if I still had some HP to work with. This T-42 is making his way around the corner. Likewise. So, I don't think I'm going to last long in this game. I think that I'm getting targeted voraciously. That one just went over his turret to the right. I'm pretty sad about that. Ooh, what's this? You gonna hit me? On the move? Man, I'm literally living on borrowed time right about now, Twitch. YouTube! Not Twitch. Woof! Well, I'll, I'll take this. I don't think this Oho will want to try and push me. Goodness gracious. Okay. We're going to have to have a counter. I'm not going to do it because I'm, I, I, I'm not going to do the counter myself. But all of you, you can have a counter for all the times where Quacky Baby called YouTube Twitch for this entire video. It's, it's getting pretty high. It's getting pretty high. 
I'm firing a lot of gold this game, but I'm on my last legs. I'm on my last legs. And I want to see if I can maybe try and take this one down. It's a pretty big game so far. I'll take it. 3,500 damage and 1,200 spotting. I think you're seeing that this vehicle on this ridge line is very good. The shell velocity combined with the... Uh, oh, he's got me. Well done, he got me. So th this shell velocity combined with the alpha damage and importantly the accuracy makes this thing a little terror on a ridge line. The only thing that truly holds the vehicle back will be the damage per minute. The damage per minute uh, is very lackluster if you want to try and get out those big damage games. But all in all, I'm very happy that we were able to do between 4,000 to nearly 5,000 um, combined here. Nearly 5,000 combined. Uh, maybe if we hit one of those blind shots, we would have been able to do it in our third game in this tank. Um, and I think I'm going to be able to finish on top of experience in each of the three games that I played here. So that's not too bad. Bad quacky baby, what are you doing? These were meant to be the games which I don't cherry pick. In fact, I'm quite happy with all three of these games that I played. I One thing that I wasn't happy about, however, is when the armor on this tank just started to not work. Did anyone notice that? Um, when that Udez put two rounds through my turret. So this vehicle, it definitely has limitations. Do not expect the T-42 to be able to take turret hit after turret hit after turret hit. And even though I was using some of my gun depression there against the Udez, I mean, all he has to do is just roll slightly high or just roll a 50-50 and it's pretty much going to be going through my turret. So you've got to watch out for that in this vehicle. It's definitely not the best aspect of the tank, the turret armor, um, but it's something that you should still rely on against your, your equal and your lower tiered tanks. Maybe not your Udez, however. So my team were able to go on to win that battle. And once again, we finished top on experience, top on damage. And we make ourselves 47,000 credits profit. Albeit that we did fire a lot of premium rounds in that game. But when I noticed that shell velocity, I just wanted to dip into my profit. Definitely not the best thing you can do. But to still make 47,000 credits a game while also having that extra shell velocity and that extra penetration that makes this thing pretty darn dangerous on a ridge line so the t42 what do i think about it do i think that it's worth it well wargaming are actually being fairly generous with the way that they're presenting this package and that is that they're not just giving you the base vehicle you can't the standard package pretty much has everything that the other big packages have in it it's available for the next nine days 27 pounds for a premium vehicle with two sets of brothers in arms crews that you could move into other tanks as well that's a pretty good deal for a decent enough medium tank now do i think that the vehicle itself is absolutely incredible it doesn't really do anything super special it doesn't have an auto loader it doesn't bring any new mechanics to the game it's just another premium medium tank but it's good enough that it is definitely worth a look at the things that I love about this tank are just enough turret armor to be able to handle equal and lower tiered opponents, great accuracy on the tank, and also 10 degrees of gun depression to give you that flexibility, and the, the premium penetration as well. Those three aspects allow this tank to do some really cool things on a ridge line. And so if you're a big fan of the boys and you just absolutely, utterly want to have these crew members, it's a shame there's no voice acting. If they'd done voice acting, that truly would have been completely epic but it's just the crew skins there's no special voice acting here don't expect that homelander is going to be giving you some of the uh his famous one-liners throughout the the series but interestingly enough you can actually change his qualification you could make him a gunner you could make him a driver you could make him a loader in whatever vehicle that you want and so i could imagine role playing with homelander in in, a, in an artillery maybe your t92 harnessing the true power of a soup uh, could be a little bit of good role play there for you and i guess if you absolutely utterly wanted lots of american really good crews you could buy a bunch of these and you guess you could put homelander in every single slot why did i say that wargaming i can imagine the marketing department now are just absolutely jumping for joy did he just say that woohoo all right so my final mention i want to make to just what do i think about this whole collaboration between the boys and world of tanks it doesn't feel like world of tanks anymore right um I'm, I'm biased though. I'm biased in two ways. I'm really trying hard to remain objective here. 
I love this program. I honestly think it's one of the, the best programs on TV at the moment. Definitely not for kids. But if, if you're an adult and you like your programs and you're a bit bored of the way that some of the superhero programs go and you kind of like the idea of some superheroes who are who are probably actually anti-heroes, right? I think it's a good one. I've really enjoyed it. It's definitely one of uh, my favorite things to watch with Tanya and I'm really enjoying season two as each of the episode comes out. So for me to have some of the characters that I enjoy inside the game is pretty cool. However, not everybody knows about this program. And for them, I, I, I think that it does look a little outlandish. And for Wargaming, at least for now, not releasing the tank without a skin might annoy a few of the tank collectors out there who just absolutely don't really want all of this crap, as they're probably going to call it, cluttering up their garage. Now, while I have no idea what Wargaming's plans are with the T-42 and they, whether they will be releasing it in the future, either for gold or alternatively uh, but just for, for money at a lesser price with all out, without all of the extra stuff that you get, I can't confirm that. But I guess the fact that this thing's only going to be available for nine days kind of puts a little bit of a pressure on the player base to be able to pick it up. But at least it's not at the most outrageous price. And at the end of the day, I can only provide you with my insight and information. And it's up to you to decide whether you want it or not. And so ladies and gents, boys and girls, that is it for today and the T42. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. But if you absolutely hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments what you think about everything. That is being presented here what do you think about the tank firstly the t42 how do you think it stacks up compared to uh its competition do you think it looks like a good vehicle do you think like it looks like an awful vehicle do you think it looks absolutely overpowered what do you think about the styling of the big ride skin for the t42 and um, also what do you think about this the boys tie-in with world of tanks do you feel like it's completely out of place does, does it make you feel less interested in the game because it's losing its its historical appeal or do you feel that it's just a bit of fun and if wargaming are going to try and make some money and they at least give something worthwhile for their customers then you're all for it and as always thank you so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon